Welcome back to Godot 101, the series where I teach you the basics of the Godot game engine. This is lesson number six, where we're going to talk about how to detect when two areas collide or overlap. And specifically, we're going to make our player walk around and collect gems that are scattered around the screen. Okay, let's get started. So to start things off, I've made a new scene called Gem, and it's just an area 2D node with a sprite and a rectangular collision shape. Okay, so I went ahead and saved that as Gem, and this will be the scene that will spawn the gems that our character is going to walk around and collect. So over on our main scene, we just need to link the player. So we're going to instance a player in there, and then we're going to add a script for the main scene. OK, so we're going to have a score variable to keep track of how many we have collected. In the ready, we're going to set process to true. And we're going to write a new function called spawn gems. And the spawn gems function is just going to take a number for how many gems we want to spawn. So we're just going to count to num. And we're going to spawn a bunch of gems. Now to keep things organized, what we're going to do is add a node here. And we're going to call this gem container. So this is just a node that's going to hold all of our gems organized underneath it. So we'll be, it'll help us keep track of how many gems are left on the screen, all that kind of thing. So up here, I'm going to say, I'm just going to get a reference to the, to that node. So I don't have to type get node all the time. And so here, what we're going to do is we are going to say, so we're going to need to spawn gems. So we need to actually load the scene too. So we use preload for this. And we want to get the gem scene. So if we go over here, you can right click on this and choose copy path. And then you can just paste it right in there. Well, if you have it inside of folders and things, you don't have to type out the whole path. Okay, so we're just going to make a gem. We're going to add it as a child to the gem container. And then we need to set its location to somewhere random. And to do that, we need to know the screen size, just like we did on the player. We're going to say screen size, get viewport, get rect size. And then our random location, we're going to just say g.setPause. Okay, so now if we if we do spawn gems 10 in our ready function, then we are going to see some gems pop up in random locations. Oops, we forgot to do uh, randomize. So obviously we don't want the random locations to always be the same. Okay, so there's our gems. Now what, all we want is we want to know when the player bumps into one so that we can make it disappear like it's been picked up. Now that means that we want to know when the player's collision rectangle has overlapped the gem's collision rectangle. And they are both area 2Ds. So we're going to go over to our gem scene and we're going to add a script to it. Gem. And all we want to do in this gem script is tell it to disappear when the player overlaps it. So we don't actually need anything in our ready because we're going to use a signal. On the gem, on any node, if you click over here on node, you can see what signals that body can, or that object can 
um, produce. And so on the area 2D, it can detect when other areas enter or exit it. And it can also detect when other bodies enter or exit it. Since the player is also an area, area enter is the one we're going to want. As soon as the player's rectangle enters the gem's rectangle, this signal is going to be produced. And a signal is something that you can listen for and do something whenever it happens. And it's going to tell us the area that, that it was. So, so we're going to take that signal and we're going to click connect. And then you can choose a node you want to connect that to. So if you wanted to do something to one of the other nodes, you can. We're going to leave it on gem. We're going to leave the name, default name as it is. And now it's going to create the function for us. So on gem area enter, we can say Q. Actually, to start with, let's just print area. This is going to print out what happened when they overlap. It's going to print out what area it saw. Just so you can see what happens when we run it. This is a good way to troubleshoot. See, when I entered that one, it printed out area. If you notice, it had already printed out some other areas. That's because some of these gems are overlapping. If all we did was delete the gem when another area entered it, these gems would have deleted each other, right? And we don't want that. We want it to only do it when the player enters. So we can do that if we look at the name. So if we say area.get name, that's going to tell us the name of the area that overlaps. So let's try this and see here. Now when I go on the gem, see it prints player. So it knew the area that entered was player. And in the case of a gem overlapping, if we can get that to happen, there we go. See, a couple of gems overlapped, so we get the name of them. And because they're because we're spawning a bunch of things named gem, Godot assigns these unique names to them just because every every node has to have a unique name in the tree that it's in. So these gems trigger, but we don't care about those. All we care about is if it was the player. So we're just going to say if area.getName is player. And if it is, then we're going to queue free. So now when the gems overlap, they won't delete each other. But if we hit one, it is gone. OK. Now over here in our main, we can tell when we have picked up all the gems because the gem container is going to be empty. All right, when the gem container is empty, um, I want to spawn some more gems. So I'm going to make a just going to make a level variable here. And we're going to tell it to increment that level every time we gobble up all the gems. So in the process function, what we're going to do is we're going to say if gem container get child count. That'll tell us how many children it has. So if the child count is zero, the gem container is empty. So we're going to inc increment our level to the next one, and we're going to spawn level times 10 gems. So we'll spawn 20 of them on level 2 and so on. And that should let us run around and clear the screen and then have some more to go pick up. OK. Now the next step is what we'd like to do is have you get some points when you collect a gem. So that means when the gem gets deleted, we want to add to the score. And here's the thing, the code that's deleting the gem is over here on the gem itself in the script that runs on the gem. And the score is in this script, which is on main. So if we look at the tree, the gem is going to be underneath the gem container. And that's where the script that is going to detect the collision and delete the gem. But the score is up here on the main. and that's where we're keeping track of the score and where we're going to show the score. So we need to we need a way for the node, a script that's running on a node down here, farther down the tree, to talk to a node that is farther up. 
And this is a really common thing that you need to do in Godot. And there are two different ways to do it. One of them is kind of the obvious way that a lot of beginners do it, which is wrong. And then there is the right way, which might not be obvious at first, but hopefully I can explain it to you clearly enough that you will understand it and start doing it. Um, this is a really important concept to get right. So I am going to dedicate the next video to talking about doing proper communication between nodes. So I will save that for the next video and we will call this one complete. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.